Right, uh, well, good afternoon everyone. Um, my name is Darren Fuller. Um, I'm a security consultant. Um, been basically working with uh, security for the last um, eight or so years. Um, previous to that, I was uh, a notes developer with IBM, um, did a bit of um, admin uh, and a lot more development as far as the, uh, the domino stuff goes. Um, I was team lead for uh, IBM Amir in India, uh, X-Force. Um, run a company called Sequest uh, with uh, a colleague of mine, uh, Paul Marsh, who is situated over there. And we'll be doing an interesting uh, VSAT talk, uh, well, after gin o'clock. Um, been using Notes for uh, a while now. Um, started on uh, OS2. Um, and I actually started using uh, Notes before IBM adopted it as their uh, kind of main platform. My clicky thing's not working, bear with me. Um, so this is the uh, brief that I submitted to uh, 44Con. Um, basically, there's been a number of technical papers, uh, but as far as I'm aware, there's been no um, presentation given that covers uh, all aspects, or as many aspects as possible, of uh, Domino security. Um, so I want to give you a general overview from um, a pen tester's point of view. So you know what you can see uh, when you hit a Domino uh, network from the internet, what you can do with it if you find one when you're on a client site. And um, there's going to be a couple of uh, tools released uh, to do funky things with the uh, Domino client uh, locally. Um, there will be a few uh, demos and things in here. So we're praying to the demo gods everything works OK, but bear with me. Um, right, well, this is typical. Um, nothing at all about Notes and Domino uh, for the last few years. And then uh, a guy called Billy Goat uh, did a talk at B-Sides Vegas this year about uh, Domino hashes. Um, we're going to cover Domino hashes uh, in a bit of detail uh, in a few slides time, but uh, if you want to check out the uh, talk, it's quite interesting, it's on uh, irongeek.com, so Adrian Crenshaw's uh, site. So a bit of background about Domino. Um, before I start, how many people have used Domino in the past or know what Domino is? <laughs> right, I'll be off. Right. There's, um, Half of 1,400 companies, uh, this was the brief uh, in one of IBM's PDFs about four or five years ago. Um, I went through the list and these are the ones that I could find that are still using it. Uh, a lot of them have migrated to Exchange or Google. Um, apparently it was uh, used by the CIA, they were one of the uh, early adopters and they are still using it now. Um, runs on various operating systems from uh, Big Ten uh, down to well, a VM on the laptop in front of me here. So uh, it covers various different uh, operating system platforms. A uh, bit of history about it, uh, created by uh, a guy called Ray Ozzy. Um, first version shipped in 1989. Um, it was one of the first uh, commercial apps, um, apparently, that included uh, public uh, key cryptography. Um, due to this, there were three major editions um, available in the early days, which uh, I'll go into more detail why in a second. Um, the latest version is in beta now, uh, it's called 854, and uh, apparently it has uh, some sort of uh, social or community uh, aspect to it. Um, I've only literally really heard about this in the last few days, so I don't know if any of you guys have seen it or not, but uh, I don't know if it's uh, you know, going to be like Fred Smith likes names.nsf or something like that. So. Um, right, a bit of uh, background information about the uh, crypto. Um, the US edition used 64-bit keys and uh, where we had uh, international um, restrictions on uh, arms exports, um, they were limited uh, internationally to 40 bits. Um, there's a deal done with the US government in uh, 97 um, to allow them to use 64-bit uh, keys for international, uh, providing that they had the first 24 bits, so the other 40 would be quite easy to crack in a day or two. Um, our French uh, friends didn't like this, and uh, there was an international edition uh, made available that used 40-bit encryption keys uh, for the French market. Um, these days, you can use a lot stronger crypto. Um, bit of uh, security overview. Um, obviously, you guys that uh, know about notes know quite a bit about this. Um, the basic thing is uh, an ID file. Um, this contains uh, your notes name, um, certificates that allow you to authenticate with the Domino server. Um, and if you've got any uh, other encryption keys, uh, they're going to be stored in your ID file. Um, that is encrypted and protected by a password. And uh, we'll look at that in a little bit more detail in a bit. Um, 
Some of the things uh, you can do on a database, you can set an ACL and um, you can make this quite granular. So you can either have people listed individually by name, um, you can have groups of people in there and um, for each of these groups uh, you can have different roles associated. So, uh, you know, as you guys might have seen, you can have, uh, you know, an admin group that has the admin role ticked and, uh, you know, so on. Um, you've got uh, ECLs, which is uh, the sort of what others do bit up here. Um, this screenshot is um, part of the uh, security uh, setup for uh, notes on your client. And um, you can control granular access uh, through that uh, to uh, things like the operating system or uh, ability to read uh, environment variables, so you can stop, uh, you know, a Java app from accessing your uh, your local machine, for example. Um, mentioned NAB groups a bit. These are groups that are stored in the name and address book. Um, these can be nested, so you can have one group uh, for, you know, admins or, um, as is quite common, uh, for terminations or people that have left the company, and then you can. Um, have subgroups in there for you know the day or the year or whatever that they've left or for the groups of admins for different countries. Um, various layers of encryption which uh, is what makes it quite attractive to uh, you know companies that have got uh, stuff that they want to keep as uh, secure as possible. Um, your basic encryption, uh, you've got database encryption, um, there's three or four different levels of encryption that you can apply to a database there. Um, document encryption, um, basically if you encrypt a document all of the fields in the document have to be uh, marked as encrypted. Um, field encryption, uh, with this you could assign uh, an encryption key to a particular field. So you know, say you're storing passwords uh, on a database but you still want other people to have access to it but not see the passwords, then uh, you can basically import uh, an encryption key into ID files for your admins but don't give it to anyone else. Um, transport layer encryption is using your uh, public key to encrypt your comms with the uh, Domino server. Um, takes a little bit of a hit, but you know it's pretty negligible, really. But yeah, we're hackers, and uh, can we whack it is the question. And uh, the answer is yes, we can. Um, these examples are based on uh, facts. They are real stuff that we've come off uh, across uh, while we've been on a client's site. Um, some of the bits and pieces uh, we found uh, from the internet as well and it's quite scary when you can take control of a complete system from the internet and they don't know about it. Um, root is nice, we're all hackers, we all like admins and things but um, look around, you know, there are other users that might have uh, access to more interesting information so, uh, you know, look around for team rooms and things like that and uh, they get some good data out of it. So start off uh, breaking in from the outside, um, what you can see from the uh, internet. Um, these are some things to look for, um, you know, Notes has got I think about 18 or 19 uh, files that ship with it by default uh, for databases and, um, you know, there are other things here, um, log.nsf for example, uh, if you can get access to that. But um, names.nsf is probably the most important really that you can find because that will give you uh, usernames and passwords. Um, Names.nsf is the main directory uh, for Domino which uh, gives details of uh, users and um, things like server configuration, uh, paths to other servers and that kind of thing. Um, Domlog.nsf, uh, that is um, a database that stores uh, information about internet users. So um, we'll see a bit more about that in just a second. And uh, webadmin.nsf, um, I'll put you'll be lucky up there because if you get that, it's practically game over for the server, um, which we will demo shortly, hopefully. Um, there's a tool called Domino Hunter. Um, there are a bunch of different tools out there. Um, there's stuff built into um, Nessus, for example. Um, there are other scripts, but Domino Hunter is quite easy. It was uh, written a few years ago, but it still seems to find most of the, uh, the new databases. Um, so checking out the uh, slash hacker notes domain, uh, we've got the domlog.nsf uh, database here and uh, I don't know if you guys can see that, you've got the uh, cookie value here, domauth uh, sesh id and um, that's uh, default to a 30 minute expiry. If you can get hold of that you can uh, still use a session, there's no um, you know, login on IP addresses or anything like that, it's just straight session. 
So NAB access, um, on our hacker domain, uh, we've got access to the name and address book. Um, so you can see down the side here, you've got uh, configuration values. Um, this is the uh, main uh, person group, uh, person view rather. So uh, it shows you the uh, users uh, in the company. Um, you've got the groups tab, which is uh, actually closed on here. But uh, that's where it contains your, uh, your people groups. And this is because the admins have messed up and granted anonymous reader access. And as I was doing uh, research for this presentation, um, a friend of mine um, works for a company, they're a big notes house, and he actually scanned a few of his servers and uh, found that one of the uh, name and address books was open to the internet uh, on one of the dev systems, so it does happen. Um, for all you non-notes guys, on the right hand side here, uh, you've got a list of the various access levels um, from uh, manager down to no access. Uh, manager is very nice to have because it allows you to do anything you like uh, practically with the database. So um, I mentioned earlier that the name and address book stores passwords. Um, well, there's a vulnerability uh, documented in 2005. Uh, I'm sure it happened a lot longer before that, but this is when it was documented. Um, still overlooked by a lot of admins, and um, the basic problem here is that the HTTP password field um, is visible in document source. So you can go in and you can view the uh, hashed or encrypted version of uh, the user's uh, internet password. So to crack passwords, what you have to do is grab them from the document source. Um, there's a couple of different uh, types of uh, hashes. Um, there's a, a normal and more secure uh, with um, John the Ripper associating that with Lotus 5 and DominoSec. Um, Lotus 5 were just straight hash, uh, DominoSec was salted, so we're um, a bit uh, you know, stronger, but still not uh, uncrackable. So this uh, is a rough example of the HTTP password in the document source. Uh, you've got up here the uh, username, HTTP password, and the hashed value. Um, now the brackets around it uh, show that that's uh, a more secure uh, domino password type. So uh, you know, if you see those, um, especially if you're running uh, passwords from various uh, name and address books uh, through John, um, you are best off um, splitting them into uh, you know, the salted and unsalted or secure and less secure passwords. And um, Metasploit has a module here, uh, Lotus Domino Hashes Auxiliary. Um, this can help with uh, automating uh, gathering hashes from the uh, name and address book. Um, Nmap also has a module to do this, and there are various other products that do this, but you know, if everyone's got Metasploit installed, um, that's, that's a good one to, to use. So these are the uh, results for cracking a password. Um, so you run john.exe with uh, DominoSec. Um, is everyone here familiar with John the Ripper? Yeah, okay. Um, this was um, based on a, a small dictionary file. Um, but you know, it shows that it's, uh, it is quite possible to, uh, to crack these passwords. So once you've cracked passwords, um, you can now properly authenticate with the Domino server. Um, so a good database to go for um, initially is catalog.nsf. Um, now if you're going to authenticate, um, if in the name and address book you see the flag for uh, fewer name variations with higher security ticked, um, that means you have to use the uh, common name of the user, so you have to use Joe Space King rather than joking. Um, Catalog.nsf, uh, as the title suggests, um, contains a list of all the databases on the server. Um, also gives you uh, access control information, and uh, if you go into the by name view, um, check out your user that you're going to be authenticating with, and that will give you a list of uh, databases that your user's got access to. So targeting uh, some interesting users, uh, we've got the uh, application catalog here, we're viewing the um, databases by title, and uh, as you can see, you've got hack test, which is the server, uh, payroll at NSF, which is the payroll uh, database. So take a look into the uh, application entry, um, so you basically click on it, um, and you can see you've got various different levels, so it'll show you that other domain servers has no access, um, which is down at the bottom here by default. Um, you've got these uh, other two interesting uh, users. So you've got God Mode, uh, which sounds pretty good. 
um, and payroll admins, which you'd expect to have editor access to a payroll type database. Um, going into the uh, groups, um, we'll check out the group member uh, list for the particular group in the ACL we're looking for, which is God mode. Uh, you see this uh, Jack Pot guy is uh, a member of the uh, God mode group. And uh, this is one that John popped earlier. So uh, that would give us a lot more access. Now, there's a database um, called Web Admin. Um, it allows an administrator to run uh, various commands on the server from a web browser. Um, you'll get a um, quick console uh, normally rather than a live console because uh, the live console by default is uh, disabled. Um, so you can run operating system commands using the uh, load um, parameter, but you can't actually see any of the results. Um, so all you'll see is like, if you're doing ls minus l, for example, it'll say the command's been executed um, and you can't actually see it. Um, bin.ls minus l, you have to have the complete path to the command you're going to be running or nothing happens. And um, a few of these uh, demos that I've seen in the past uh, were using Windows servers. Um, and you could write out to a web accessible directory, so you could uh, you know, run a command and pipe the output to images slash output.png. And then if you load output.png in your browser, um, it would give you the output of the command. Um, for some reason, this didn't work on Linux. So uh, thinking outside the box a bit, we decided that uh, we'd open a uh, notes database shell instead. So uh, I'd like to introduce you to shell.nsf, aka D99 shell. Uh, which is a bit of a play on words. Um, with this, you can wget the file uh, from the Domino server, and by default, uh, it will end up in the notes data directory, so you can just access it straight away. Um, one of the problems you may have uh, due to uh, certificates and signing and things like that is uh, your uh, database is an unknown uh, signer on the uh, server, so you'll get this exception. Uh, Handily, if you go into the uh, files tab uh, on the um, uh, web console, you can click on your database, click on the sign button, and the server goes off and signs it for you. Um, so, you know, everything will work. So, this is D99 shell in action. Um, we're showing uh, the notes data directory and uh, running the ls minus l command. Um, this also works on Windows servers. Um, it started off as a very crappy script uh, that just outputs some basic text. And uh, my friend Terry came along, and he's a current notes developer with all sorts of experience. And uh, he basically made this nice shell for me. So if there's any interest in uh, taking this any further, uh, we're looking into getting it to do things like uh, edit files at the moment. Um, so this is a work in progress. It's kind of very much a beta. But if you're interested, give me a shout. <clears throat> right, here we go. The moment of truth. Let's have a, uh, a quick demo of uh, we've seen this. So, first thing we do, <clears throat> have a look at uh, the Domino directory. Um, so we know that uh, we've got uh, in these groups. You've got uh, God mode that had uh, a guy called Jackpot um, as the or one of the uh, admins. We check out his person document, and if you view the frame source for this user, scroll down a bit, and you've got the HTTP password, which is quite nice. Um, you also notice uh, down here you've got this uh, user ID file. Um, that is actually the uh, user ID uh, for this person, but you can't use it uh, on the web side of things. Right. Um, as I said earlier, Metasploit can automate this. Um, I did run Metasploit against this, and uh, being on a, a VM on my laptop, uh, it probably took about four minutes to uh, actually scan all the, uh, the users. So um, I don't want to put you through that. Um, what I've got is um, this is just a file. So this is just typing the uh, file that uh, was taken from the uh, Metasploit plugin. 
So we've got um, a bunch of users there. Um, this is actually loading John live uh, with the lolsec passwords directory uh, list. So it's about 38,000 passwords. And uh, you can see it's, uh, it's cracked it there. So now we've got a decent user. It is actually signed in already. Sorry, that was my mistake. But um, you can see that we've got uh, Jackpot uh, has full, inf uh, full admin rights to the server. Uh, <clears throat> checking out the live console, um, you can see that you can't actually start the live console. Um, has to be run with a specific uh, parameter, and the chances of seeing this are pretty remote. So uh, you've got the uh, quick console here. Um, so you know you can type in um, Alice minus L. <laughs> show tasks, and uh, that will give you a list of uh, tasks that the server's running. So running user bin wget and then blah, because although I do like to taunt the demo gods, I didn't want to have three VMs with uh, various servers running on uh, this system. So um, the wget command is running. Um, you can pull in uh, databases from uh, other servers. Um, you know, obviously there are mitigations to that, but it's not very often that you see them, unfortunately. So this is the uh, shell, and uh, so you want a, I don't know, a listing of etc. You got it there. Uh, if you want to uh, cat the password file, you got it there. So uh, that's basically a quick demo of, uh, of the shell. Um, if there's any more interest in that, uh, let me know, and uh, I'll see if I can get a copy over. So breaking in from the inside, um, objectives, just like any pen test, um, what you want to do is look around uh, the network and find uh, ID files or uh, you know, usernames, passwords. You want to crack these passwords, um, try and get into the name and address book. Um, you know, similar sort of way that we did uh, from external. Um, from there, the usual thing, finding ID files with higher level of access and uh, own the place. Um, nice quote here from uh, Catherine Spambauer, who's uh, a product manager uh, for Domino, and she's basically saying that what we all know, many breaches of security are done by insiders. Um, you know, they are the people that like to play around on your network. <coughs> so gaining a toehold. Um, since R5, you need to have an ID file to actually access the client. Um, it will just close uh, if you haven't got one. Um, if you want to access a server, um, the ID needs to be valid, it has to have the right certificates and not in a deny access group in the name and address book. So you may find ones that uh, you know, it has password expired on it and they won't give you uh, access to a server, uh, although you should be able to get access to the local client. So our normal favorite shared directories, um, you can see there you've got um, dictator.id and uh, Believe it or not, we've been on client sites where they've just got one uh, big shared directory that contains the notes IDs for every single person in the company, so they can uh, move around and share desktops and things like that. Big no-no. So it used to be uh, hard to crack notes passwords. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever tried it or if you've tried brute forcing a password on the client, but uh, a notes client will delay exponentially um, up into a certain limit the uh, time it takes for the password prompt to come back. So that's a complete pain. Um, there are a number of products available to um, crack these passwords, but uh, we've been working at, um, with Passware, and I'd like to say a few huge thanks to uh, Natalie. Um, she's basically uh, been kind enough to lend us the software using in this uh, following demo. And yes, I did say the demo word. It's just um, a really quick version um, of the uh, recovery kit. Um, go in here, uh, pick an ID file to recover. Uh, so, you know, again, we use uh, jackpot. I'll show you the uh, dictionary here. Um, 36,000 odd uh, words to, or passwords to check. And these are based on uh, a leak from Lulsec. <coughs> Hit the recover button. 
and uh, seconds later we have the password out. So, you know, that's another toe hold onto the network with very little difficulty. So the um, following thing, um, that particular uh, version of the cracker um, only allows you to crack uh, one ID file at a time, so you have to load them up, try and crack it. If it doesn't pop the password, you have to load another one up. And um, we've been lucky enough to get hold of a beta of the latest version of the software. Um, so again, rather than taunt the demo gods even further, um, I've actually got a video of this in action. So what it can do is um, you just select a whole bunch of uh, IDs. Uh, this is the uh, password recovery kit forensic edition. And uh, here for the sake of time on this demo, um, I'm cheating a bit, so using a really small uh, dictionary, but it gives you an idea of what happens. So hit the go button. So we've got some super secret passwords up here. We've got uh, 44 con, uh, let me in one. I love goats. Everyone loves goats. They're oblong eyes, they're awesome. Okay, so in very little time at all, um, it's gone through all of these passwords. So, uh, you know, if you're interested, this is um, the next uh, beta release, or it's the next, going to be the next final release of the uh, Forensics uh, Recovery Kit. So, that's one to look out for. So, this time, rather than uh, going for admins, uh, we want to read the uh, payroll file. So, uh, again, catalog.nsf, go into there, find the application, find who's got access to it. So, we've got payroll admins, which is a group in the name and address book. Now, in these, uh, when you go into name and address book, you've got the groups. Uh, these have got uh, three members. Um, in this case, we're looking at uh, user Sandy Beach. And one thing you will find uh, that is quite common, believe it or not, still uh, in name and address book, is uh, the fact that they store the user's ID file in there. Um, there are ways of getting around this. Um, so you can use um, a secure uh, password store. Uh, for the ID files as the ID vault, um, which I'd recommend if you're not using it, use it. And the result, we get access to the payroll and find out that jackpot is getting paid far too much money. Okay, um, fun with Domino clients. Um, spoofing mail, have any of you guys ever spoofed uh, Lotus Notes emails at all? Ah, nice. Oh show everyone else how to do it. And uh, we've got local access protection on particular databases, um, so what we do is show you how to remove that. Um, one of the things that Lotus Scripts can do is uh, access the Windows API. Um, there's also loads of other stuff in there, but I've not been a <coughs> developer now for the last ooh, six years or so, um, so you could probably do fun things with Java, but uh, Script is about my level. So mail spoofing, um, you can all use uh, SMTP mail, um, spoof it by Telnet, um, you know, welcome to the 80s. Um, Lotus Notes has a thing called document properties where you can see the contents of the fields. Um, so in here, the document properties are a dead giveaway. Um, you've got the, uh, the MIME track there, you've got um, SMTP originator. So, you know, any admin's gonna look at that and just say, oh, well, it came in through SMTP rather than being Domino. Believe it or not, <coughs> to spoof an email, this is what you need. Um, so it is, what's that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven fields. Um, a couple of them are computed. And um, if you're wanting to play around with this, uh, just create yourself a form with those uh, fields on it and make a new memo. Uh, paste it from your database into the mail.box database on the spoof user servers. Now the mail.box um, is basically like the uh, relay routing uh, for the notes server. And um, checking the properties, um, you can see the uh, from field here has a proper canonical uh, notes email address in there. Um, for you admins that want to know if your users are spoofing this, um, the <coughs> dollar updated by field uh, will give you the name of the 
person who created the document, so that is something to watch out for. Um, if you are a notes admin, um, I suggest having a look at your mail.box database and uh, maybe setting up a paste agent so it will disallow users to paste documents in uh, just to you know, stop this sort of thing happening. Okay, um, Notes has a ACL setting to um, enforce consistent ACL. So when you take a copy of a database from a server, um, it will stop you doing things like taking the ACL off, giving yourself access to particular groups. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit of a feature. Um, opening a protected database locally gives you an error that looks a bit like this. Um, if you get an error that looks like this, uh, it has local access protection by encryption. So there's no way you're going to be opening that uh, unless you're a lot cleverer than me. So there are um, companies out there. Uh, I was checking on the internet to see if there's uh, any companies offering uh, solutions to unlock these databases. And uh, there are. Um, they range from sort of cheap to uh, nearly $700 for a version of the software that will allow you to um, unlock multiple notes databases at the same time. And um, I don't know <coughs> what kind of business model uh, these guys are operating on, and I really don't want to uh, you know, do anything bad to their business. But I've checked a few versions of these so-called life-saving products out. Uh, one of them changed four bytes, another one changed six. Um, I mentioned to colleagues when I was working in IBM in about 2004, um, you could change one byte to remove this protection. So these guys are doing 75% too much work. And, uh, you know, I'm not being held responsible for this, but uh, the secret is out, and you could save yourself $700 by changing that byte uh, to C4. Um, on smaller databases, um, I've not quite worked out the threshold in size, but it's about 2.5 meg. Um, this flag is mirrored in 1A4, so you just need to change 1A4 instead of 2C4. Uh, we're going to release a tool today uh, called Local Access Protection Deprotector and No Cache Expected, uh, otherwise known as Lap Dance. Um, it's uh, written in Perl by me, so it's bad, and uh, you know, don't laugh at the code. Um, what it does is gives a bit of information about the database. Um, and allows you to add and remove protection. Um, so it's available from the uh, Sequest website. Um, if you need a link, uh, drop us an email if you can't remember this address. Um, support for uh, ODS versions uh, 16 through to 51, which is the latest uh, 8.5 version. Um, it displays, as I said, protection information. It'll give you a bit of uh, detail on the encryption flags. I don't know if I mentioned it can actually add and remove uh, local access protection. So, <coughs> praying to see Link out this time that uh, this particular demo works. So we've got the super secret team room uh, on the server that we've taken a local copy of, and uh, we get the not authorized to access this database. Uh, you know, classic kind of flag. Um, this is what happens when you run it, it just gives you a bit of information about the uh, program. Um, this time we've run it against a uh, super secret uh, team room. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but it will pull out the database title, um, tell you the ODS version of it, and it will confirm that it's got local access uh, protection. One more click, and uh, it's removed local access protection. So go back into the notes client and pray to ceiling cat. And uh, the database has been hacked at uh, 44Con. So just for fun, if you're admins or developers and uh, you want to really wind your mates up, you can uh, reapply the uh, flag. So on a uh, database that hasn't got local access protection, that didn't work. As you can tell, I haven't got any uh, debugging uh, going on here. Okay, well, the demo gods aren't smiling on us today. No, nope. fail. <laughs> I thought I was riding my luck a little bit too much. 
So, uh, in uh, summary, um, as I said at the start of the presentation, I aim to give you a general overview of uh, Domino security, uh, demonstrate a few ways of breaking in from the inside and the outside, and uh, show you some tricks. So, I hope that uh, you guys have uh, learned something from this. And uh, any questions at all? Hello. Sorry. He's. Sorry, I'm. <laughs> yeah. Um, it is, yeah. You can uh, download notes from uh, IBM.com um, as an evaluation version, um, which is what I've done here. Um, so the software is available, yeah. Um, it can do, depending on how you set the server up. So you, you basically set the server up um, and the setup for the Domino server will give you uh, a user ID to run it under. So it default the notes and it will make it for you or you can uh, use one that you've, uh, you've already set up. Do you ever see it running through? Uh, I haven't, no. <laughs> Sorry, question. Uh, when you do this with email and it looks like it came from the user, mm. All right. The uh, the question was with the uh, the spoofed email. Um, everything looked alright, but the reply button didn't show up. Yeah. No, I've not uh, not seen that. This um, straw back over here. Um, yeah. When I was messing around with it, uh, you had to have a computed uh, recipients filled with send to and copy to in there. Um, so that was one of the ways that I got it working. Um, everything else other than posted date, which just has at now in the formula, um, seemed to come out okay. But uh, yeah, give that a go. Um, drop me an email and I'll, uh, I'll send you the form. Uh, any other questions? You can, yeah. If it starts with um, open bracket G and has a close bracket at the end, um, then that's a more secure password version. Um, it's also 20 something characters rather than 32. Um, like on notes, if you use the um, password function uh, with the old version of the password, if you type in password cat, you get a value, and if you type in password cat again, you'd get the same value. But with the more secure one, it uh, puts a salt in, so you get a different hash, which is, uh, you know, it's still possible to crack it quite easily using John uh, and a reasonable dictionary, which there are quite a few out there. Uh, any other questions at all? Okay. Well, if you uh, want to give me a shout or drop me a line or find me drinking gin any second now, uh, I'm UK Fully or Company uh, Sequest. Um, there's the website up the top. If you scan the QR code, it's not going to do anything bad. It will just give you our uh, company name and phone number. So, uh, all good. Um, so thanks for listening, everyone. And uh, if you could fill in your feedback forms, uh, are important. So that'd be great. Thanks a lot. <laughs>